this one, you are learning the lighting process of this scene and how to create such an animation out of it. So stay tuned. In this video, we are going to use this scene to create a realistic looking interior using Chaos Vantage. First of all, I'm going to initiate a live link to see how my scene is looking before exporting it to a VR scene. As you can see, I'm using Vantage 2.8.1, which is the latest version. Here is my live link. If you are moving in the scene and your live link doesn't move, you need to go to the settings tab or hit F10 button. And here, check if it's locked to your camera. You can unlock it and stop and start the live link again. Now, as you can see, it is interactive. I'm going to quickly adjust the exposure with the exposure bias to see how my scene looks like. I'm going to check the materials. Okay, so it looks good for now. This light is too intense. I'm going to control this one. And it sounds good to begin with. I need to do a couple of changes on 3ds Max before exporting it, including adding a ex exterior view or background to the scene. So what I'm going to do is hitting M button to open the material editor. I'm going to add a VR material and add a VR bitmap, which is this one. I'm going to open that, connect it to the fuse and connect it to self illumination. Apply that to my surface. And now correct the UV. So as you can see, it's a curved surface. I'm going to add a UVW map, put it on cylindrical, and then I'm going to match the cylinder to my shape by selecting the gizmo and scaling it. You can do this from top view. Okay, so it just need to roughly match that shape. Now going back to the perspective, and here I'm going to adjust the height, rotate it, and find the best view from my interior. So now I'm going to move it down a little bit so I can match the skyline with my view. Now I think it looks good. Now we need to adjust the intensity in the material tab. And now I'm going to adjust the self illumination, put it on two. Now that looks way better. Okay, I'm going to do the rest in the Chaos Vantage. Now let's export my 3D model to a VR scene file. I'm going to the VRA tab, select VR scene exporter, and then export my 3D model. I'm going back to Chaos Vantage and select open scene. And I'm going to open my VR scene file. If you see these tabs are hidden and you need to click on them every time, you need to double click on one of these tabs and, and then they will pin to the screen. Okay, now we have two source lights in our scene. One of them is, if I go back to 3ds Max, go to render setup settings. Here you can see my main light source is my GI environment. So I'm going to turn that off and export my scene again load the scene so now my only light source is this uh, v-ray self-illumination material i'm going to add an hdri to my scene so here in the lights i'm going to start creating a day hdri substate then i'm going to select my hdri file okay now i think i have the most basic lighting which is my exterior light ready to go And as you can see, I've adjusted some of the elements in the filmic tone map to achieve the best quality and compress the highlights from outside. Now I'm going to add my other lights one by one. So I'm going to begin with these sailing lights. Here I'm going to select my lights and select IES. Then I'm going to select my file. You can find all of these assets used in this 3D model, including the 3D model itself, in a link in the description below. I'm going to place that, then adjust the position. Then I just need to adjust the intensity. Okay, if you see that this intensity tab doesn't work, you need to select the intensity mode and put it on the rescaled intensity. Now I'm going to change the tone of the light and make it a little warmer. Let's make it 5500. Okay, then I'm going to add a 
sphere light here in this color light. Once again, I'm going to the light tab, select sphere, place it here, and then go to the settings, make it smaller, position it. Change the tone again to 5000 and I will make it invisible. Okay, maybe I need to make it less intensive. And now I'm going to add the lights here to this corridor. I'm going to select my lights and select rectangle lights. Place one here. Adjust the width and the height. Put it roughly on your light. Make it invisible. Make it more directional. And make the temperature 5000. I'm going to hit Ctrl and D and make a duplicate of it and move it here. And make it even more directional. Okay, we have another light here to handle. I'm going to select an IES once again. And here I will change the IES file. I'm going to reposition the light. Rotate it. And maybe add another one of these rectangle lights here. Okay, now we are missing a light in this chandelier in the middle. So I'm going to make a duplicate of this sphere light by hitting Ctrl and D and place it inside this sphere. And make it even warmer. Also increasing the intensity. I think we have a basic lighting to begin with. I'm going to increase the intensity of the HDRI. And now adjust the filmic tone map settings again. You can add an LUT file. I'm going to share these LUT files again with you. going to use this one, control punch 2. And I'm going to make these lights a little bit colder. So maybe 6000. Okay, now I have noticed that we have some texture and UV problem here. And I came up with an idea to make a floor generator for this file. But I'm going to skip that process, I've already made it, and I'm going to make a separate video teaching you how to use Floor Generator and Multi-Texture to use different textures on your floor. And one other thing before I export my model is to place a light here in this section, so it will look realistic, because now we have an IES light here, but it's looking dark. So I'm going to 3ds Max, and I'm going to create a cylinder here, and I'm going to apply a light, very light material, change the temperature to... 4500 and apply it set it as 5 then I'm going to push it in okay now I'm going to re-export my scene please remember each time you want to reload your scene make a quick save okay now you can see we have a high quality floor created using floor generator and multi texture and we also have a light in here now I think we should change the intensity and directionality of this light also for this one. Okay, let's create some still images. Then we are going to create an animation out of this scene. I'm going to increase, I'm going to decrease the field of view and increase the camera leaping. Okay, this can be our first camera. I'm going to adjust some final effects like white balance going to add a little bit of sharpen and now I'm going to save the file and re make a render so here I'm going to select camera 2 here select the resolution from camera change the samples to 300 set it on ultra if you have a good PC select Intel open denoiser and you can select only one final pass for a quicker render here I'm going to set the path and then I'm going to hit the start. 
One thing I don't like about this scene is the wall color, the wall material. So I'm going to enhance the material and make it a little bit brighter. I'm going back to 3 this Max, going to the Material tab, I can remove all of this, and I'm going to select a, a wall material from Chaos Cosmos. So I'm going to the Materials and the Walls. Here I have a material called Wall Paint White Mat. I'm going to add that to my Material Editor. Then I'm going to select the wall material and right click on it, go to Select and select the material. Then I'm going to select the objects with that material and apply the new material to them. I'm going to repeat this for the sailing. Just be careful what is selected in the scene. Then I'm going to use the same gray color on the diffuse here, but I'm going to make it a little bit brighter and desaturate it at the same time. Now I think it will look better. That looks way better, I think. Okay, now I'm going to create some other cameras. I think this is a good view. And now we can try the new 2.8 Chaos Vantage lens effect. So here I'm going to select lens effect. Can see it on this light. I'm going to increase the intensity. So I'm going to make a quick render of this also. As you can see, the shadows here are way too sharp. Okay, so I'm going to select my eyes light and then I'm going to the settings tab to the advanced settings and here select the soft shadows. Now you can see the edges of that shadow is way more soft. Let's create another camera. Okay, here I think we have a good opportunity to create a close-up shot of this decoration bowl. And I'm going to teach you how to make depth of field effect. So here I'm going to create a camera. I'm going to adjust the exposure. And I'm going to enable depth of field. I'm going to the camera tab here, select the peak focus and select my focus point and put it on this pole. Then I'm going back to the depth of field advanced settings. I'm going to the aperture size and put it on 50 or maybe 30. I'm going to increase the exposure again and I'm going to save my camera. Now let's make a wide angle shot. Here you can see the still images rendering results. Let's move on to the next step, which is setting some cameras for our animation. If you don't know how to add your cameras to the animation slider, check out the part 2 of my Chaos Vantage tutorial. The link is in the description. I'm going to speed up this process, but the overall idea is that if you like to have a cinematic look in your animation, always try to move around with your camera in the scene to find the best angle that shows the best view of your object. Also having some shadows and some light on the edges of the object to show the depth of the image. Also try slow transitions between your cameras and maintain a rhythm all the way to the end of the video. For example, here I have 3 seconds of transition time in between my every shot. So my video will have a rhythm that will make it look more interesting. We are at the beginning of a long journey, so leaving a like, a comment and subscribing to my channel will give me some energy to move on. Thank you.